As doing so is April 4th, although that doesn't matter because it's not part of my grow journal, but I'm so used to saying what date it is <laughs> from my grow journals. But I wanted to share with you how to make a closed system room and how inexpensive it can actually cost you. So at the very minimal, you need a light system, right? You can buy a light system like my, my 600 watt light bulb system on Amazon, regular bulb. And I bought that thing, it doesn't have a bulb in it right now, but I got bulbs around in the summer. Oh, there's one right there. Anyway, Apollo systems on eBay go for like a hundred and, I think it's 30 bucks if you get a hood like this. If you get that big UFO type of hood, um, the big dome hood that I, that I used in my other grow upstairs. Um, I'm not growing up there now, but I was. The autos that I grew, they came out great. Bringing you saw those videos. You can get, uh, I think with that, it's like under $200. Anyway, you can also get a $1,000, $1,000, excuse me, $1,000, a thousand watt Apollo system for like under 250, something like that with a pretty decent, you know, hood. Keep in mind, we're doing closed systems, so you don't need to worry about the air, the air vented hood. That's not, that's not necessary. We're using air conditioning. I keep this room at 75 with no problem, with this thousand watt double ended Gavita bulb, which is super duper hot, way hotter, makes the room way, way, way hotter than our standard thousand watt bulb does. Yet I keep this room easily at 75 degrees and that air conditioner does not turn on all the time. It hardly costs me anything electricity. It pops on here and there to keep it cool. So, you know, it's always on, it's always blowing air from outside in, but it's not always on cool. Now, when it gets more toward the summertime, yeah, then that thing's pretty much on all the time. But even then, it doesn't cost as much electricity does to run a heater in wintertime, so. Right, so what is a closed system, how it works, and how you can build your own? So, after you have your light, your light set up, no problem. You can buy it, like I said, if you wanna go on the super cheap, and it works really good. I've grown several grows with Apollo light systems. They work fantastic. Don't believe all that hype and bullshit about, oh, you need a Gabita system, or you need this brand bulb. Uh, a Hortolux I2 or whatever the fuck shit. I've grown with all of that shit. It makes no difference. I've done side-by-side -side grows, you know, exact same strain, exact same room, partition between the two light bulbs so they don't interfere with each other. You know, or done the exact same, you know, strain, exact same grow, exact same room, back to back, and no difference between the Apollo bulb, the Hortolux bulb, uh, Sunmaster, um, I don't know, all the expensive ones, Ushio, I've used all the expensive bulbs and they make no difference. So I'm like, you know what? They only last longer. <laughs> so I'm just like, forget all that. I'm gonna go with Apollo bulbs. I get the same results. They last just as long. And so I'm good at that. I know once in a while, you know, with an Apollo bulb, you might get one that burns out quickly on you. It does happen more often than it does with um, a, a, like a Hortolux. That is the, uh, the bad luck rate with Apollo is slightly higher than with uh, a better name brand. But it's not a big deal. If it burns out, it's $20 bulb. Buy a few of them. You know, that way you have, you know, a bulb extra on hand. You always want to have a bulb extra on hand anyway, at least one, just in case your bulb goes out on you all of a sudden for no reason. And then you need to get a new bulb. So it can happen. Always be prepared for that. Anyway, so for about definitely under $300, you can have that system. Believe it or not though, you can get a double-ended system going even if you wanted a Gabita bulb now they're not only making Gabita bulbs anymore I think Phillips uh, broke the contract with them or just cut it off or whatever uh, you can still find them but um, you don't need the super expensive one it doesn't work any different or better in fact I returned mine because it made no difference and it had like a one-year warranty so I'm like hey look it you said I can return this thing if it didn't you know blow my mind it doesn't I went back to the standard uh, 1000 watt double ended Gabita bulb the non-special one uh, whatever it's they, they perform identical so but these double-ended bulbs definitely perform better than the single-ended bulbs and I just want to show what I mean by double-ended bulb because there's a difference how they look oh my god it's so bright it's gonna blind me come on ah I can't see with the phone it's so bright I can't even see the phone's picking up on the light Come on. All right, you see that now? Hoping you see that. Sorry, I'm gonna focus in. There's two ends on the bulb. And so it plugs in both sides and heats up both sides. So it just makes a more even uh, thing. It has a bigger footprint. Uh, super, I mean, it's so powerful that if it wasn't on this light mover, 
it would be burning the shit out of these plants. They'd be all kinds of fucked up. I know because I tried that. <laughs> That's why I had to buy the light mover. Absolutely need it. Uh, but even with nine foot tall ceilings, that when the plants get too tall, I absolutely need to move this light. It needs to be at least two feet to two and a half feet away when it's not on the light mover. It has to be. Otherwise, it'll burn the shit out of the plants. And, and that still gives them so many lux. But right now, they're getting like 1,000 up here, 100,000 lux. That's crazy. That's, that's as much as the sun, you know, on a good day. On, on an okay day, you're talking about 50,000 lux from the sun. On a good day, like in California, Oregon, places where the sun really beams freaking good, you're about 100 and I think 20,000 lux at your absolute best. So this is getting like just great constant. You, know, you don't get that constantly out, outdoors, maybe in California. But if you get clouds like that, you're not getting that no more. So to get that constantly is fantastic with a light bulb. No other light bulb I know of can, can pull that off uh, and, and get the grows this, not even LED. I got some company offer me uh, free LED light bulbs, you know, to do some test grow for them. I might do it. I've used LEDs before, but not, nothing ever grew the way I wanted to. Nothing even compares to this thing right here. I'm not being sponsored by them or anything. So, like I said, don't have to get Kavita. Just get a double-ended bulb. Oshio makes one. Doesn't matter who. So anyway, you can buy a Oshio double-ended bulb, 1,000 watt for 80 bucks online. You can get a double-ended hood like this that will fit the double-ended bulb, the 1,000 watt double-ended bulb for about 40, 50 bucks online, something like that. And then you can buy the you know cord and everything with the uh, ballast for like another 200 bucks online. And I just use the uh, electric ballast, right, the little white one. Uh, it's called E-Ballast. That's actually the main brand. Like, very inventive um, people. Uh, they must have really thought about that name very hard. And uh, let's call it E-Ballast. Uh, fantastic. So anyway, very simple design and stuff, but it works great. And it's been working for quite a while now. And you can pick one of those up by 200. So for under 400 bucks, you can get a nice double new 1000 watt system. And then you need a light mover. I bought the light mover used. Got lucky, found someone on Craigslist. It's hard to find them used though, but brand new, I think they're under 200 bucks. So for a decent one, that's six by things six foot long something like that so yeah pretty inexpensive overall but you don't need that you know you can just start with a regular old thousand watt light bulb and uh i'm talking too long here but anyway you can start with a regular thousand watt light bulb from apollo for around 250 bucks or so with just that kind of hood but for the regular regular light at minimum you definitely want a, a fan like that I would go for one like that before I go for more like this so just one fan like that from your grow room or grow shop I, it's hard to find them you can find them online if you want to wait for them to be shipped but if you need them right away you can buy it on you can you can buy it at your grow shop for like 30 bucks something like that I think so much I got that one for it's a smaller one um, they they range from 30 to 60 bucks just depending on I think some of them are 80 bucks basically you want to be able to mount on the wall now you can always buy something like this and rig it up on the wall it's just going to be a lot harder to do so I just, I just got that thing it was ready to rock and roll it has little cords there to turn faster slower off uh, screw a screw in the wall hang it up it's good to go so uh, that's what i recommend and the minimal one of those um, and have it facing down on the top of your canopy if you can 20 bucks at walmart boom when, when it's season when they're in season if not you can find fans like this online uh, they work a long time too. I've had these for quite a while. These are the Galaxy brands. And I think Walmart carries another brand too called Sayo. I don't know, it started with S. But the, these ones have lasted a long time so far. They're on constantly, 24 7. They never turn off. Uh, I might start turning them off, at least most of them off. I don't know. I don't really care. I just leave them on 24 7. But I thought about turning them off when, uh, you know, on a timer when the lights go off. Except for the air conditioner one, because that one needs to blow the air around. The next thing you're gonna need, so that's why, so if you have, you know, two of those, one, that's all I use in, the, in this big room, 10 by 10 by nine, 10 feet. So 20, 20, 30, right? 70 bucks, a use, a use 800 watt air conditioner. That's all I need. It's more than powerful enough to keep this room cool. And that was like 50 bucks used. Uh, you, can buy, you can find them on Craigslist, you can find them at Goodwills, all kinds of places, especially like when summer just ended. Everyone's trying to sell their conditioners. I have another one too, a 500 watt one, but it wasn't quite powerful enough to keep this room this room cool. Uh, but yeah, so I recommend two smaller air conditioners, like 800 watt air conditioners versus a big swamp cooler. It's uh, 
be more efficient and you, know, you can put them in different sides of the room if you have more than one window. If not, just put them in the same window. Or just get you know, a bigger one, a 1500 watt one, something like that. Either way, they'll work great. You can find them used all day long for really expensive. So, so far, we're at around uh, you know, 100 something dollars. We're, you know, we're not too expensive so far. You know, $50, uh, 120 bucks right now. No big deal. And then another 250 for the light fixture for Apollo 1000 watt light bulb or even cheaper for a 600 watt system. Make sure you get Apollo though. I mean, I, I can trust Apollo. Apollo works for sure. I've tried another generic brand, but I don't know if they still sell, if they're still in business or not. And that, they actually work really good too. I think it's called Revolt. As a matter of fact, I still have their ballast, the Revolt ballast. It works great, 600 watt ballast. Um, but yeah, it's like a blue ballast, but I think it's called Revolt. The next thing you're going to need, uh, you, don't, you don't have to have a trellis, that's not mandatory, it's not necessary. But for a closed system, you definitely need CO2, that's mandatory. Absolutely need it. There's no other way to do it that's cheaper than a CO2 system. Honestly, I tried everything. Nothing is cheaper that's going to actually work for you. Those little bags you hang up and shit don't work, don't even try it. Just, they don't work. I mean, you can try it and waste your money if you want, but they don't work. I tried all that shit. This works, it's inexpensive. Um, the way I have it set up, I only have to change that thing every month to every two months. It just depends on how I have the timer set up. Uh, what I do is I, I try to keep the timer set up to where my CO2 stays between 900, goes up to about 1300 or so, and drifts back down to 900, turns back on again. To do that, I don't use this expensive Titan control bullshit. Bought it, don't ever even use it now. Tried it for a while, it made no difference. All I did was suck my CO2 too. Uh, running your room at 1500 ppm constantly is not worth it. Um, you can buy one, I guess, that you know would adjust it better, but honestly, all you need is a timer. A little cheap timer. Right there, I think it's a couple dollar timer, literally, like five bucks or something. I have it set to where when the lights are on, it's off, the CO2 is off. And I have it set there to where it comes on about every hour, it looks like. Yeah, two, and then it comes on for half an hour. So every hour it comes on for a half an hour. Toward the end of the day, you notice I have it set to come on every hour and a half for half an hour. So it's three, three, then one down, three, then one down, three, then one down. But for the first half of the day, it's two, up, one down. One down means it's turning on. So it turns on for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, times, times 30 minutes. So uh, I should be able to do that really quickly. That's like four and a half hours, something like that. So that's how long it comes on for. And I have this turned super low. I mean, it's just barely on at all. That ball barely even moves. Like when it turns on, you can almost tell it's not even on. Like it just barely bounces for a second. And then that's how I like it. So that way, you know, you have to mess with that, that, that for a little bit, the ball, uh, how much you turn it on. Once you find out, like for one day, put it somewhere and then get a little CO2 meter. The CO2 meter you absolutely need, a uh, monitor. Uh, I bought that one on eBay for like 120 bucks or Amazon, one of the two. I like Amazon because they have reviews. And so um, I, I only read the three star and four star reviews because right? I know people pay for reviews. Uh, so yeah, I went ahead and um, got that thing. Works, it works great. And uh, it tells me what the CO2 is. That's all I need to know. And it tells you also the temperature and humidity, but I don't need to know all that. I got, I got those. I got plenty of those on the room. Yeah. It's good to have. But um, anyway, so 120 bucks or so. So well, I don't know where we're at now. How much is that so far? Let's see here. Light you can get for about 200 bucks easy, you know, if you do the 600 watt bulb and, and everything. You can do just one fan, you can get away with that. Another 30 bucks right there. You know, we'll call it 50 just in case you, you have to pay more. So that's 250. Another 50 bucks for air conditioner, that's 300. 400, we'll just call it 400, we'll kind of round up and down. Uh, you need about $300 in a good CO2 system unless you buy it used. You definitely want to get a tank though that's up to date so you can you can exchange it at like a welding place. I exchanged mine at a welding place. It costs that's the best place I think to exchange them. It's really cheap uh, rather than trying to exchange them at a grow a grow shop is going to charge you more. So welding place it costs me seventeen dollars to exchange. All I have to do is take this one in. They give me a new tank, you know, and I take it home and I screw it in and that's it. Seventeen bucks every time I do that. No big deal. I only do it like once a month to every two months. Uh, with this setup right now, it's been about once a month. Right now it's empty. I uh, just ran out. Uh, not a big deal. They're just in bed, so I'm not too worried about it. But I need to go and get it filled again. The main thing here, this is my. So the tank and this thing right here is what you need. I think both of those together is around 300 bucks at a grow shop. 
if you buy it online, you just buy this part online, a lot cheaper. And then, you know, go to a grow shop or somewhere to buy that, a welding place maybe. And you can get a pretty good deal. You can probably get it for around $200 if you buy this online and buy this at like a welding shop. So, but we'll call it 300 just just because. So, I don't know where we're at now. I forgot where I was before. Was it 400 So, four, five, six, seven. What's the next absolutely must have? Oh, dehumidifier. Because your environment is so important. It's like the most important thing you can possibly have. You need a dehumidifier. About 140 bucks at Home Depot. Um, what I did is I just took a PVC pipe and a proper, a proper hose connector that will connect to the PVC pipe. Because this uses a standard hose. If you have a hose hanging around, you can just screw a hose in there and cut it off. And then have this on top of a crate and, or a box or something. And then um, have a bucket, five gallon bucket underneath. You know, five dollars for the bucket at Walmart, something like that, three dollars. Now this one's a Home Depot bucket, but Walmart has white ones for like three bucks, I think, something like that. And then just have it dripping into there, constantly dripping. And then empty this like whenever you need to. I need to empty mine every day, uh, sometimes. So it just depends. But yeah, usually though, it won't fill up for you know, it'll take at least 24 hours to fill up. So check out once a day should be fine. Looks like I gotta, I gotta clean the filter. That's really easy to do in this in this model. You just take this off, take my vacuum really cool trick is I take my wet vac and I suck it all out and put it back in and it, it cleans it really good so I'll do that here after I'm this video that's another thing you're going to need probably well you don't have it's not a mandatory um, so anyway that was five six fifty or so we'll call it that something like or damn it I lost track now hold on one two three fifty two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, hundred and fifty. Yeah, so 150 bucks. You need a few timers. You get timers for pretty cheap at Walmart. So just analog ones. That's all I use. Um, I think. Yeah, I don't think I have any more digital ones anymore. I just use analog ones. They work great. They're very reliable. Don't go too cheap on them though. Uh, you want to get a decent brand. You know, spend about. 10 bucks on one of those it's a 15 minute increment this one over here those last a long time and it's just a 30 minute increment so i don't know anyway so uh get, get get one of those get a couple of those you might need one for your air conditioner if you don't want it to be on constantly uh, right now i have my air conditioner to where it's not on constantly in the summertime i'll have to have it on constantly right now i have it turning off when the light goes off no reason to have it on right now when the light's off it's just not helping any at all uh, but i will have it on when the light's off here really soon because it's going to be getting a lot hotter outside okay so timers and everything a uh, little extension i just use walmart ones seriously so if i need any type of little um bars or whatever i just buy little cheap walmart ones they're like a, literally a few bucks a piece a couple bucks honestly like two bucks each or something like that it's crazy i've been using those for a long time they've never burned out on me or nothing like that if you're a little more sketching about it, buy a little more expensive brand. No big deal. So with all your cords and stuff like that, we'll just call it another hundred bucks. I know it won't be that, but let's just throw another hundred bucks in there. Still under a thousand bucks. That's everything you absolutely need. You can go more luxury and uh, you know get a flood table like this. Put all your Walmart bags. I'm using Walmart bags this time around. Walmart bags, fifty cents each. They hold about ten gallons of medium. I don't have them filled up. I only have them filled up to about uh, five to seven, but. You can fill them up all the way and hold 10, 10 pretty, easy, pretty easily and get some massive, massive plants. Look how big that, that thing is already. That only has five gallons of, of soil in it. Or not soil, co cocoa. So I guess for your first grow, mandatory to pick up some Walmart bags. Make sure they're the breathable kind, the just regular old standard kind. If you, if you can't find them, because they like to try to sell those designer ones now that, that aren't breathable though. Uh, hold it up to your mouth and breathe through it. You'll see it's breathable. A lot of them have like this plastic coating on it and it's not breathable. You don't want that. And those are more expensive too. If you don't know where they're at, ask Walmart. Say, hey, where are your guys' regular blue Walmart bags at? You know, the, the ones that, uh, the shopping bags so I can keep shopping over and over again. They're usually right underneath one of the counters or a couple of the counters where they actually check you out at. That's where they usually keep them at. So same place they keep their paper bags and stuff. Bam, buy those for 50 cents a piece. Works great. They work just like the black bags of the grocery shop that are a lot more expensive. Another thing you absolutely need, or don't, don't absolutely need, sorry. It, uh, um, 
luxury wise, but anyway, so that right there, those you absolutely need, but that's, I'm not even gonna count them in price, they're so cheap. But the, uh, well, I guess I'll, you'll also, for your first grow, you'll need cocoa and things like that. A uh, big thing, a big brick of cocoa um, can make three cubic foot. You can fill about four or five gallons or something like that. I can't remember how many I get out of one brick. I used to do more than one at a time, but I think it took me two bricks to do, you see all these, I think. Yeah, but I know I had more than this. I did eight plants. Two bricks did eight plants. I think one brick almost did five. Did like four and a half, something like that. So 10 to 12 bucks at your grow shop for a brick of cocoa. Bam, done, done there. And, you know, I use four Nova Bloom. That's it, that's all I use to, to grow. Oh, and, and a Botanic Cares CalMag Plus. Super inexpensive to buy that to initial startup. Get the smaller bottle that'll easily last you one grow. That's like 24 bucks. Another 17 or so on the CalMag Plus. Boom, you're still really under $1,000 still. This thing down here, brand new, I think, the six by three flood table costs like, I can't remember. I know it was under 200 though. Just can't remember what the price was. Like 120, something like that. It, it might even been like 90, I can't remember. It was, it was really, I was really surprised how inexpensive it was. They had to order it for me at the grow shop. Um, and they, I just said, hey, I, I don't need the expensive one. It, you know, it's, this thing is pretty damn sturdy anyway. Uh, they make a little bit more thicker ones, no, no, no reason for that. All the PVC pipe to make the six by four trellis, I don't know, 30 bucks, something like that, pretty cheap. This thing, 80 bucks, I think, at Walmart, 12 gallon. You don't have to have a 12 gallon one, just makes it more convenient, so I don't have to empty it so often. So still, I mean, all together, I still think you're at around 1200, 1300 bucks if you wanted everything I have in here. That's it, that's all it cost. Panda plastic, 20 bucks to cover the floor and the window and stuff. You know, you might need a little more, a little more than 20 feet uh, it comes in 10 foot already, but the length of it is however much you want. So I buy 20 by 10 at a time usually. I think it's 20 bucks. So you can easily buy 40 by 10 for 40 bucks. And that's going to be so much panoplastic, you probably won't need all that. I also use a little bit here for this door, all the way around here just to keep the light from coming in on the corners of the door. It's because it's not like a super airtight door. And I think that's everything you need. Oh, you need a heater, I guess, for winter time. Because you really want your temperatures to be to be dead on. So I have my air conditioner on. I usually have it set to some sort of on a timer usually um, to turn off, to at least turn off when the lights are are off. Right now I have it also on a timer when the lights are on to turn on every 15 minutes and off for 10, 15 minutes. I have that I think for the whole entire cycle of when the lights are on. And that just works out, keeps the room at 75 degrees. I have the, I have the air conditioner set to like 72 or something like that to keep that. But if that's not working, then keep the air conditioner on longer. And if you have to keep it on 24 while the lights are on, do that. What do we have to do to keep the, the temperature in the room at about 78? That's like down here. Up here is a little bit warmer. Uh, I use my little laser light thermometer to see the leaves to make sure that they're staying at a reasonable temperature around 78 or so when the light's beaming on them. They're on a light mover too, so they have a chance to cool off before the light comes back on them again. Uh, let's see here. So with the air conditioner, you have to, I had to fiddle with that for a while before I got it down to where the room is the temperature I wanted it to. So you know, first when you do it, try it with the air conditioner on um, while the lights are on and have it on all the time when the lights are on. And then just set it to uh, like 75 degrees and see what, that, see what that does. If the temperature is drifting too high at any part of the day, then start working and you know, figure out what time of day it is your temperature is going up. Buy one that you know, tells you like what time it was when has a little history on it. A little digital one like this. They're not that expensive on eBay. And then you go to memory. Ah, this thing's dirty. And max is 80. And max, or minimum is 65. But that was a while ago. I need to actually adjust that. Because that was when I didn't, wasn't even growing in here. So I had the lights off and everything. I forgot to reset it. So reset it. Set it back to Fahrenheit. Because that's way off. My room usually stays within. I forgot that I had turned my lights off and everything. Because after I was finished with the other grow, I totally sanitized this room. I blew it up with, with a bunch of uh, sulfur burning. I sprayed a bunch of stuff. I did a couple bug bombs. You know, I always do it between, between grows just to kill everything that might be in here for the next grow. And unfortunately, I forgot to, uh, well, I couldn't 
bomb the tent or anything because I had, I had my seedlings growing in the tent and I thought the tent would be fine because it's in a separate part of the house in this room. But somehow the powdery mildew worked its way into that tent when that, remember my plants in here had powdery mildew. And although I, I got rid of the powdery mildew, all the spores were still flying around. They got to my tent. So the plants have a little bit of powdery mildew. So I'm gonna, they're, while they're in veg, I'm gonna spray them with Eagle 20, kill that shit for good. I'm gonna burn sulfur in this room again when I do that. So it kills all the mold spores and stuff in the room. I'm also gonna spray all over the room uh, the stuff that kills mold. I'm not gonna spray that on my plants or turn all the fans off when I do that. Anyway, that's a whole different subject, but it'll be easy to control this time because I've got it, got it in veg, so. And then it'll be dead and done and gone and it shouldn't come back at all. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, so this, with the heater also, what I do is I just set the heater on, uh, it's minimal setting, 1200 watts, whatever it is. I buy one that has two, two settings. It's really inexpensive, 30 bucks, I think, for this one. And then I turn it on. What I do is I wait until the temperature is where I want it, at about 75, 78. Then I turn the heater on, and I turn the dial until I hear it click. Then I turn it a little bit past that to where, to where it's not on. And so that way I know it'll, it'll only kick on when the temperature drops really below kind of what the room temperature is. Then I monitor the, I monitor the temperatures of the room for a while and make sure that it's not dripping below like 70. And if it's not dripping below 70, then I'm like, I'm cool with the heater. If it is dripping below 70, I turn the heater up just a little bit. And then I, uh, as far as air conditioner goes, I, I like to get that dialed in too. So in the, when the light's on, I make sure that um, it doesn't go above 80. I like to keep it, I don't like to go above 78. I like to keep it right around 78 as, as much as possible. Usually my room stays really close though. Um, like I've checked that history there recently and it was right on the money, like between 72 and 75, just consistently. I like to grow a little bit colder than warmer. Some people like to grow a little bit warmer, I don't. Uh, they say it works better with CO2. I don't believe it, I haven't seen the, I haven't seen it happen for me, so. What works for me is a slightly colder room but maybe because I'm using a closed system, I don't know. So then uh, the main thing I have to mess with though is your air conditioner. That's gonna take you longest to fiddle with. So after you have it on, have it turned off during, unless it's warm outside, they need it on as well when the lights are off because you don't want your, your, your room to get too, too hot even when the lights are off. When the lights are on, that's when you really need the air conditioner on. Like try it the whole time first at like 72 degrees, 75, somewhere around there. See what happens. If your room is getting too warm still, turn the, don't try, if the air conditioner is already on for the entire time the lights are on, and it's not gonna turn on that whole entire time most likely, it's gonna turn off and on up by itself. It'll, it'll click on fan mode, then the, then the thing will kick on. So it's 800 watt, 800 watt um, air conditioner, but I have a little a wattage thing down there to tell me what it is. Most of the time though it's like 115, because it's just a fan blowing air from outside. If it gets too hot in here, then the, the air conditioner turns on and it kicks up to about 890 watts. So even though it says 800 watts, it goes a little bit higher than that. Most most devices do do more than what they claim. And uh, so anyway, start with it on at 24 hours a day, period. Just leave it on, just plug the fucker in, put it to 72, leave it on like that, monitor your, 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 your uh, temperatures for a couple days. If you're going too cold, then that's when you know, okay, at certain hours, you can put on a timer and start clicking your, clicking on those hours it's getting too warm or too cold and turn it off for those hours. Uh, whatever, whatever times of day it's getting too cold for, just turn it off for 15 minutes at a time and then on 15 minutes, off 15 minutes. If that's still too cold, then just flat have it turned off for those hours completely. And uh, if it's getting too warm still on the hours that it's on, then you need to turn the air conditioner down more down to as far as it'll go if you have to, all the way down to 68. If you have your air conditioner down, as far as it'll go down to 68 degrees, and it's on the entire time, it's still getting too warm in your room, uh, that's weird. But if that's happening, you need a bigger air conditioner. Simple as that, or more, more than one air conditioner. But you know, like I said, I have this super hot bulb, and I have the air conditioner on, it's not even on 24 seven. I think in the summertime, if I remember correctly, I have to have it on 24 seven. Uh, but even then it doesn't stay on, on. It just, it goes between fan mode and air conditioner mode. So it's not like constantly burning 800 watts of electricity, even in the summertime. But even if it did, that's still pretty good. Uh, electricity wise, it's not gonna be that bad. So that's that, simple. Uh, if it's a bigger room, like a big garage, you might have to, you know, use a bigger 
air conditioner. Also, a garage, and this is the reason why I don't know if I want to do a garage yet. I might have to insulate the garage with a bunch of pink, pink stuff or panda plastic or something to keep it insulated um, in order to save electricity because if you don't have a really good sealed room like a bedroom with good insulation and stuff, then you're talking a lot more electricity. For, for CO2, you're going to go through CO2 a lot more. Your air conditioner is going to have to work a lot harder to keep it cooler, things like that. Garages typically stay cooler, though, so that's a, that's a big plus. So I don't know. I, I might do it in a garage and see what happens. And then if it's just like, you know what, this is not working out. It's just getting, it's, I'm going through too much CO2 and, you know, I'm having to use too much electricity. Then I'll go ahead and put it in one of the master bedrooms or something like that, like I have here. This is even the master bedroom. This is a regular bedroom. So, but it's a pretty big bedroom. You want at least a 10 by 10, I think. I don't know if I want to go smaller. Maybe a 10 by 8. I might be able to work with that, maybe. Um, but I wouldn't want to go smaller than that. Not for, not for this light bulb, at least. You know, I can, I, I've obviously grown in smaller than that for my 600 watt light bulb. But for this one, I like it this size. I like having a lot of room to get around. Okay, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this helps you figure out how you want to do your room and little, little things you need to do. Definitely take the time to cover your windows completely with panda plastic first, and then if you need to, insulate it more with uh, a big thick blanket or something like that, or that pink panther stuff, whatever you want to use. And I actually cut the blanket and the panda plastic out around the air conditioner, tape the panda plastic down really good first all around the air conditioner with Gorilla Tape to make sure no light leaks in. I turn all the lights off and I sit in here in the pitch dark for a good five minutes while my eyes adjust and see if I can see any light at all coming through. If I can see in the room at all, then I, and I have all the lights, you know, little LED lights and stuff covered, because you know, believe it or not, that's enough light to start seeing a little bit of something in the room, some form of shape. And I also, you know, pan of plastic my doors and stuff to make sure no light comes in that way. And if I see any light in the room at all, then I, I look for it in the, in the window and, where, and, and see where it's coming out of. And then I, but I, you know, I try to get no light with just the pan of plastic itself. And then I put the big blanket up just for insulation to help keep the hot and cool out. Yeah, so that's it, folks. And make sure you have the white facing out of your window so that, you know, when the sun's beating on it, it's beating on white and reflecting it, not on black and absorbing heat. Uh, you want to try to keep all the heat out of your room as possible. And, uh, yeah, so really take your time to make sure no light leaks. Really important. No light leaks at all. Do what you must. Make sure you don't have no light leaks. That's it. So that'll keep your shit going really good. The... I keep this right here usually set to around 55, um, 50 or 55, and right now it's at 55, just to make sure my humidity, if I notice my humidity is going higher at any time throughout the day, if it's going higher than like 60, this thing turns on as low as I can get it, if I have to, until that humidity stops going that high. And it's the only time it's really a problem is in the winter time. In the summertime, like this humidity humidifier barely even turns on. It's mostly just the fan going. It doesn't fill up water very often uh, because the humidity is not that, you know. But once you start getting the flower, they breathe a lot more. Humidity goes up in this room. The more, the more plants in the room, the higher the humidity is going to go up, especially during flower time. That's just the way it is. So one way to you know, help keep control of that is you know, once I clone these and stuff, because I think I might want to, grow one of these strains again, or whatever this one Liberty Haze is. I think that's the one I want to grow, and I think it's this one. I cut all these lower branches off, and I, and I clone from them, and I just have all this lower canopy just gone, completely gone, so that none of these lower branches will be on the plant at all. That cuts out like a huge percent of the amount of humidity produced in a room, believe it or not. It helps your plants get more airflow through them and stuff. I do like one fan that's lower that blows the, the CO2 around to kind of be at the lower canopy, to make sure everything is nice and loose and there's a lot of airflow in the bottom. And uh, yeah, so definitely don't want to go lazy on that part. Definitely lollipop to share your plants to keep your, your yields will be the same and stuff. You won't get a bunch of lower fluff and then also those lower, it will make humidity easier to control, especially when they go into flower. That just makes humidity go up higher. But again, like I said, in the summertime, it's pretty easy to control. This winter, this last girl, I had to have this thing on 24 7 it never turned off it was just on all the time i just put it i put it all the way down to continuous so it's just going constantly and even then the humidity still wanted to be at like almost at 60 and that wasn't good for flowering and that made it a lot harder to get rid of that powder mildew that last time all right guys thanks for watching